This putrid, oozing, ghastly monster is known as the Rat King. It may be the most advanced infected we've ever seen in the Last of Us universe. It's an amalgamation of all of the infected we've seen before, now fused into one demonic being. I'm Andy Burkowski for VGS, and here is the hidden story of the Rat King. We discover this monster in The Last of Us Part 2 as Abby is trying to find medical supplies to help save Yara's life. She ends up in a WLF-controlled hospital where her friend Nora can help her find those supplies, but has some bad news about where to get it. All right, these floors have the ICU, the trauma center, and a few surgical suites. Sounds perfect. There's a reason we haven't touched this area yet. It was ground zero for the whole city, where they brought the first infected before anyone knew better. It's gonna be overgrown to shit. Awesome. This is undiscovered territory for Last of Us players. An outbreak ground zero where all these newly infected people were festering for decades. At first glance, it doesn't seem all that bad, but Abby eventually finds remnants of Fedra officers that were sent in to fight the beasts, with one officer leaving his last will and testament for us to read. I'm the last of my squad. Everyone else that came down here with me is dead. We secured most of the doors, but some were out of reach due to the overwhelming force of the infected patients. We didn't anticipate this kind of resistance. I thought they were sick and weak. I didn't think I'd see them rip my men apart. I have several bites on my arm and leg. I'm going to take a few more of these fuckers out until I get to my last few bullets. Then I'll go join my squad. If you find this, know that you will need to send more soldiers to fully secure this area. Although, hopefully, you blew up this building to Kingdom Come and weren't dumb enough to try and contain this thing. Good luck, assholes. Unfortunately, these assholes didn't just blow the building up and, in typical arrogance, tried instead to contain it. We also learn at this point that certain areas were blocked off and possibly limited by these soldiers, which, as we'll learn, is one of the key reasons that the Rat King exists. In the same area where we found the last note, we see a church that has been retrofitted to support the overflow of patients and military staff. On the altar here, Abby finds another relic, notes passed around to avoid the prying eyes of soldiers. Are they really going back in there today? Every time only half a squad returns. We lost the lab. It's time to call it. Also, sorry for passing notes like we're in high school. I just don't trust these soldiers listening in. I have no idea what's going on. Why don't they get us out of here? They keep saying evac is going to happen as soon as they make sure the building can be contained. I mean, are they seeing or hearing what's going on down there? We've lost it. I think it's not about containment. I think it's about protecting the data of the research. We need to get out of here. Our friends might still be alive down there. You've seen what those things do. No one could have survived it. Not for this long. It sucks, but they're dead. What are you suggesting? I see Scott fighting with soldiers. He's more than fed up. We get him and look for a way out. Let's give it one more day, see what these new soldiers can do. One day, then we act. Thanks. Is it possible that all of these lives were lost not to save the ones infected, but instead to save the research of those who died? We are now entering the containment zone. Seeing what it was like for those who changed while in hospital care, initially, it doesn't seem nearly as bad as it should for something that's called Ground Zero until Abby tries to get into the trauma center. What the fuck is that? That trauma center would likely be where most of the infected patients ended up. 
all of those people mashed together in one room with varying degrees of infection, festering for decades, locked in, safe from the outside world. For now, as we explore this one area in a side room that has been completely overcome by the infection, we get to see the mind of an infected person that's slowly losing all semblance of humanity. To whom it may concern, you cannot treat us like this. I understand that many people are sick, but getting shoved in here and separated from my wife is unacceptable. I've been sitting here for over three hours without an update. The doctor put some ointment on my bite mark and then vanished. This thing hurts and seems to be getting worse. Please deliver this note to your supervisor immediately. Sincerely, Don Carter. Woke up starving, but can't keep anything down. Not even water. My head is fucking pounding. The screaming outside doesn't help. Why did you lock me in here? Someone needs to come. I want to see Sasha. I want my wife. Sasha, help! Can't keep my thoughts. Barely write this. Can't sleep. Too hungry. Get me out. Hungry. Eyes hurt. Sasha. Don Carter went from an annoying Karen looking to speak to a manager into a frothing, zombified monster who is now forever crystallized in his gurney. We don't know how long this transformation took, but we do know he was one of the fortunate ones to not be stowed away in that trauma center. Abby needs those medical supplies, though, but they are hidden behind a door without power. As she searches for a way to turn on the power, we find active clickers stuck for decades, some still fused to the wall waiting for meat. Another artifact from this world helps fill in the blanks as to why this is happening. Steven, I can't keep doing this. I know I'm supposed to run tests and log the data, but I can't handle this much pain. I escorted some soldiers to the trauma. I wasn't supposed to go in there. I've seen what the patients turn into. Every single adult and child that is brought in there with a bite or scratch is going to lose their mind, and we keep lying to them. I asked to go home and was told I need to keep going. Some bullshit about national security. They offered me an office to get some sleep if I want to. Steven, you need to get me out of this. I'm going to have a mental breakdown. Dozens, if not hundreds of people, women and children, all stuck in that one room to fight and claw against each other for survival. With the power now back on, Abby travels to her intended destination, only to find something truly horrifying. Flesh and sinew fused together over decades, with people now barely even detectable. Now imagine this stewing crystallization of infected flesh, molding and fusing in order to give bloody birth to a monster. We still have to see what came from this horrific mess, but we do know it's big, it's bad, and it's angry. Abby follows the destruction of this beast to an eventual ambulance that has her needed medicine when this happens. Oh, thank God. I've get ready to celebrate. Behold the Rat King in all its glory as it hunts down Abby with an instinctual drive, stalking 
all in its quest to find meat. We see that it has the strength of bloaters, the quickness of stalkers, and the abilities of shamblers, even possibly the echolocation of clickers. This creature, though, is still susceptible to flames. Once damaged enough, this organism will diffuse infected from its being, leaving a stalker hybrid that seemingly has the same abilities. The Rat King, fierce and terrifying, is not immortal, though. With enough flame and death, it will be extinguished. The sadness here is that this being isn't one person that had a bit of bad luck, but several, dozens, if not hundreds of people who didn't know they were going to die and died a horrific death together. Their only legacy now, the decaying husk of this monstrous creature. I sincerely hope you enjoyed the hidden story of the Rat King. There are more hidden stories in Last of Us Part 2 on the way. I have a few ideas, a straw poll for those who are interested here, some of them. We have a mysterious ghost ship, a Russian bow hunter, or I can dive into the WLF and Seraphite factions. Love to hear what you think about it. I'm Andy Burkowski again for VGS.